Oh, Jesus, this knife is awesome. Today, Amy's gonna go through some great stuff with you. She's gonna talk about some knives headed out to Texas in Amy's angle. Stick around later for some very cool custom Praetorian tees that I'm sure you won't wanna miss. I'll see you then. Jeff is gonna cover a bunch of new exciting things happening, a new announcement, some openings in the Centurion program. Stay tuned. Hey guys and gals, welcome back. Going 120 with Jeff. I wanted to cover a, a quick uh, couple of announcements. One is next Friday, August 24th, is actually National Knife Day. In honor of that, we're gonna be giving away a knife. You need to go to our website at medfordknife.com and sign up in the uh, upper middle corner for our mailing list. That's how we're gonna use uh, that to enter to win. Number two is I wanted to give you a Centurion update. Uh, all of you know that we are doing an annual event. Next year's is April 5th, 6th, and 7th. It's called Centurion 2. We're gonna have some exciting new information about that next week, so stay tuned to learn more. And then lastly, I wanted to highlight Knife of the Week. So those of you know, our Proxima has been one of our top sellers, and this is kind of a special version. It's been serialized. It's probably matching numbers. I don't want to hard open and finger bang it. It's been anode and faced. It also has a, um, a flamed clip that's also been lightly sculpted. This is going to go live as our Knife of the Week. We're talking today about a custom polished flame finish on some Praetorian tea knives that are headed out to James Marsh at Action Concepts today. Uh, I have only four knives for him, but they are very unique, each and every one. So I wanted you to get a good, close eyeful of the finish. And it's got this iridescent, just fantastic, oil slick appearance to the knives. These four knives are headed out today to um, Action Concepts. Again, that's James Marsh. He's in Austin, Texas. He does not have a brick and mortar store. He is primarily eBay, and he is a uh, totally reputable reseller of, direct reseller of Medford knives. Um, his cell phone is 512-925-3711. Once you establish contact with James, he's an avid texter. Um, so he's pretty available via his phone. Now we're off to do some pictures. So uh, our, our webmaster and videographer, Billy, who's on the camera now, um, he's jumped into the middle of Greg's knife world and done it really well, but it's time to kind of update the website in its current iteration and format a little bit. So uh, we went through and uh, did a little uh, re-slick of the, of the skin so it looks a little different on the face. Um, same functionality, but just presents things a little differently. We had a meeting about it yesterday. I'm like, hey, you know, I tried this very don't care if we sell, show pictures to everybody approach. And now I'm like, hey, let's adjust that a little bit. We'll leave all that content there. Let's put the knives up front. So for impatient dudes who want to dive right into knives, they don't have to look for them. Boom, they're right on the top. So what I was thinking is <clears throat> we're going to take some pictures today. My theme right now is machinery. What I wanted to do was get some shots on the machines. So I don't even need these that clean. I'm just gonna get the shot. And uh, so I'm always trying to, when I do this stuff, I'm looking for an angle, I'm looking for some light, I'm looking for some contrast, and I'm looking for an angle that I dig. Uh, when I take a picture, I like it to be 45 degrees. I like it to be interesting. I want to make sure it shows the logo. And knife pictures are really hard to take, you guys. People don't realize it, but you've got all of the most challenging things of photography kind of converging in a small space. You've got a lot of times very muted stuff and very shiny stuff right next to each other. And the shiny stuff, if it doesn't blend with the background then the handle does or it washes out and the contrast is wrong a really good knife picture is going to be it's going to be a combination of a handle that's been photoshopped one way a blade and hardware that's been photoshopped a separate way and a background that's been photoshopped a separate way and then you bring those images together we try to take whole nat natural pictures on the fly which can be really challenging and then you hope it doesn't drop while you're shooting your picture. 
You know, I wonder if in our general overall composition, if we shouldn't do a, a pocket shot. Some guys want to know kind of exactly, you know, how much of the knives poking out, that kind of thing. When I talk to guys who are starting companies, owning companies, running companies, thinking about running a company, one of the things I see is that most people don't think about a product all the way to the hand of the end user. Um, they think like, well, I'm the maker, I make it. And then somebody else is like, well, I'm the marketer. When I think about a company and a product, I always think about it from its manufacturability and, and usability all the way to the end customer, which includes how it's packaged, how the packages fit in a box, how the boxes load and unload, the display cabinet, display case, point of sale and retail location, the profit margin in it for a retailer because they've got to make a living. All that stuff's part of my equation. This is, all of this is like being a farmer. The little things you do every day that, that add up in the long run. You know, walking the field and reaching down and picking up weeds. Sometimes it's just finding something cool to take a picture with. Sometimes that's the thing I do. So this is a crank to an engine I'm building for my dad's airplane. So let's take a cool picture with it. All right, so we've got a cool angle. Let me get a, something to... And then I'm gonna turn it this way. I don't need to tell Billy about light. He knows light just fine. I got a bolt off the old wing of the airplane. I got a cool knife. Let me see if I can get a cool picture. It'll have my logo behind it. Let's take one of the backside now. So now a guy can see this thing from the so both sides. We did a couple of closed pictures. So a guy's gonna wanna see this side of the knife and he'll wanna see this side. You know, this is really part of being a knife maker. It's not just taking some picture for Instagram and, and uh, hoping that people come and wanna do business with me. You know, just having a vision for what needs to get done and having a vision for for how to get everybody doing it you know they say it, it, it takes time the more more people takes more time and uh, and and it's true how do I get Billy to read my mind how do I get Jeff to read my mind and bring the very best of what I have to offer and the best of what they have to offer into a total package. And that's really, really hard. How do I balance a young new guy who's never been in manufacturing? How do I balance pay and safe work environment and benefits? How do I balance all of that at any given moment? And it is a balancing act. You know, if I just go hire some ad agency and get some kid out of school for some slick marketing, they don't get what we do. They don't understand it. It takes somebody like Billy who's here every day, who gets to understand and know what we do, gets to feel how the company is somewhat of a reflection of me and how our, our customer base, kind of what they like and want, and how do you bring all that together? I don't micromanage that, that much, but there's still, you know, we're not, if you, if you have a big company with 100 people, you might have a 15 person, person office complement where everyone becomes very specialized within that group. You've got seven of us in the office. I'm still wearing four or five hats. And each time I bring some new talent on, I get to offload part of that hat. And at some point, I don't know what I'm going to do other than draw pictures and knives. But while I'm still, while we're at this size, um, you know, to have seven people in the office, everybody requires a little bit of me still uh, to kind of do what they do because I'm still really involved in the product and the company and what we make and drawing the pictures and feeling the quality. I'm still... I still inspect every knife and I'm still feeling the sharpness on knives before they leave, you know. To be that involved, it does require a little bit of meat everywhere. Um, so much so, I forgot to go to my MRI this morning.